Hello everyone, we welcome you again uh, into another video. Today's passage that we are going to cover comes from the Gospel of Mark. It's Mark 11, 13, which reads, and this is basically uh, describing a part of a parable uh, that has to do with Jesus, basically, and his teaching. And it says, And seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And I said parable, I meant like Jesus trying to teach a story here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, this would this would be a, a a parable that's that's lived out, right? You could tell a story. That's right. But Jesus actually does it in front of them. Uh, he, he he does this again in 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 the Gospel of John, right? Where he uh, takes off he he takes off his his robe and cleans the feet of the disciples, right? As like a, a picture of what he did in taking off his glory to. Uh, to to humble himself, right? right. And so the, he actually just plays this out in front of them, burns an image into their mind. And Jesus has re repeatedly warned his um, his listeners that he, he's going to expect some fruit, some 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 fruit to show when he comes back. And, and, and the Muslim argument is Jesus didn't know what he was talking about because he yeah. shouldn't have went to the tree, right? Yeah, so yep. so yeah. so th it, that's what that's clearly what's being played out here, right? So yep. so this is after Jesus and his followers have gone up to Jerusalem. Um, you have the, the the triumphal entry right before this. Um, Jesus takes off and he's going to be looking for fruit, of course. And he wants to to show his his followers uh, the significance here. And so Muslims are reading this and they're just looking for an example of Jesus not knowing something or Jesus being ignorant because that would that would pose a problem for um, for the deity of Christ, for the omniscience of Christ. That's right. So uh, let's go ahead and read the passage. Um, on the following day when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. So Jesus doesn't know if there's anything on it. So he sees a fig tree. It's got, it's got leaves on it. I can go over there and maybe there's some food on it, but he doesn't know, right? Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to it. Uh, he, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Right. And the passage goes on, by the way, after Jesus uh, cleanses the temple, and uh, in verse 20, we, in the passage starting at verse 20, we find out that the, disciple, the disciples learned the lesson of, of the fig tree there. So, mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is the passage, yes. and Jesus apparently doesn't know, doesn't know uh, how, fig, how figs work, right? Yes. Wasn't even the right season, according to the passage, right? Wasn't, yeah. e <clears throat> wasn't even the right season. Yes. He doesn't even know when figs are supposed to be um, coming yeah. on the tree. So, Sam, so, yeah. isn't so, this a proof that Jesus so that doesn't that know Jesus, anything? Yeah, that basically? Jesus can't be God, yeah. <clears throat> that he's human, and he's imperfect. Now, so you've written an is. article on this, haven't yes, you? Yes, <clears throat> uh, because this is, this is an argument I heard in the 90s. And it's an argument that's often repeated even now in 2018. So this argument, although it's been answered <clears throat> over and over again, still, <clears throat> oftentimes, we'll give some of the Muslims benefit of doubt, they may have watched Ahmadidat or Shabir Ali and heard the argument, thought it's convincing, but when you have people like Shabir Ali who've been corrected on this over and over again until repeat it, then you know what their motives are. They're not interested in an answer. They're not interested in being honest with the scriptures. They're not seeking truth. They just want to trouble the faith of Christians. I'm going to read the late F.F. F. Bruce's <clears throat> exposition of this miracle of the Lord, because notice when he cursed the fig tree, it withered, uh -huh. showing right. that he possesses divine power. It's amazing how they overlook that. That part, yeah, that at, at just his spoken word, the fig tree withered by his command, showing his power over the natural elements. That's right. But let's forget that part. Let's just put that aside. F.F. Bruce and his classic <clears throat> volume, Are the New Testament Documents Reliable? Pages 73, 74. It's worth quoting at length because this exposes the ignorance of the objector. It shows that the person raising this objection is completely ignorant of Israeli or Palestinian <clears throat> geography and how <clears throat> you know fig trees actually work and function during that season. Because remember, it's Passover week. That's it's, right. it, this is the week leading up to Passover, and that's in the spring, right? So let's read what he says. The other miracle is the cursing of the barren fig tree. A stumbling block to many. They feel that it is unlike Jesus, and so someone must have misunderstood what actually happened. 
or turned a spoken parable into an acted miracle or something like that. Some, on the other hand, welcome the story because it shows that Jesus was human enough to get unreasonably annoyed on occasion. Now watch his comments. It appears, however, that a closer acquaintance with fig trees would have prevented such misunderstandings. The time of the fig is not yet, says Mark, for it was just before Passover, about six weeks before the fully formed fig appears. Pay attention. Fully formed fig. The fact that Mark adds these words shows that he knew what he was talking about. When the fig leaves appear, remember it says he, found, he went and found leaves, but nothing on the leaves? Right. When the fig leaf, <clears throat> leaves appear about the end of March, <clears throat> they are accompanied by a crop of small knobs called taksh by the Arabs, a sort of forerunner of the real figs. These taksh are eaten by peasants and others when hungry. They drop off before the real fig is formed. But if the leaves appear unaccompanied by taksh, there will be no figs that year. So it is evident to our Lord, when he turned aside to see if there were any of these taksh on the fig tree to swage his hunger for the time being, that the absence of the taksh meant that there would be no figs when the time of figs came. And what did the text say? It says that when he went, he found leaves, but nothing on the leaves, showing that our Lord was looking for these Taksh. Now, Bruce that, is not the only one. That he has a great knowledge. Of, of course. Yeah. And so did Mark, because Mark said it wasn't the season. That shows that Mark is familiar with the area and the location and how fig trees work, which shows that his testimony is based on either personal knowledge of that area, or it's based off of an eyewitness, because according to church tradition, Mark is writing down Peter's account That's right. of the gospel. Now, another New Testament scholar, Craig S. Keener, <clears throat> confirms what the late F.F. Bruce stated. Keener's commentary on the Gospel of Matthew, page 504. 504. Notice, at Passover season in late March or early April, fig trees are often in leaf on the eastern side of the Mount of Olives. At this time of year, such fig trees contain only green early figs. Arabs call them taksh. So <clears throat> when you find fig tree with leaves, Normally, those leaves, you'll find on them this taksh, what he calls, only green early figs, which ripen around June, but often drop off before that time, leaving only green leaves on the tree. A leafy tree lacking such early figs, however, would bear no figs at all that year. So that means if someone knew the area and would, is familiar how fig trees function, would know that the Lord was looking for these taksh as a sign that this is a fruitful uh, fig tree. Finding no taksh on the leaves was an indication this is a barren tree and good for nothing but destruction. So this actually shows the Lord knows what He was doing and what He was looking for. So it doesn't prove that Jesus Christ was ignorant and therefore couldn't be the omniscient God in the flesh. But the better question is, why did He curse the fig tree? That's, Why was he looking at right. it? Because if you actually read that chapter, what does he do right after cursing the fig tree? What does he do? Cleanses the temple. The reason why he cursed the fig tree, because the fig tree is used in the Old Testament as a symbol of Israel That's right. and its fruitfulness or lack thereof. Again, I don't want the people to take my word for it. I'm going to quote some passages. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 13. <clears throat> I will take away their harvest, declares the Lord, There'll, there'll be no grapes on the vine, there'll be no figs on the tree, and their leaves will wither. What I've given them will be taken from them. Did you notice that Israel's likened to a grapevine as well as a fig tree that's barren, and God will now curse, right? How about Hosea, chapter 9, verses 10 to 16? There's a couple of them, but for the sake of time, I'll just look at a few. Hosea 9, verses 10 to 16. When I found Israel, it was like finding grapes in the desert. Desert. When I saw your fathers, it was like seeing the early fruit on the fig tree, what we call the taksh. But when they came to Baal Peor, they consecrated themselves to that shameful idol and became as vile as the thing they loved. If frame is blighted, their root is withered, they yield no fruit. Even if they bear children, I will slay their cherished offspring. Now, I think this suffices to show that the fig tree is often used as a symbol of Israel in its fruitfulness or lack thereof. And here we're told part of the punishment, the judgment will fall upon Israel, Jerusalem, is that God would destroy Jerusalem. And ironically, Jeremiah chapter 8 
It's a prophecy in respect to the first temple being destroyed and Jerusalem being destroyed. And why I say ironically? Because that's exactly what happens when Jesus enters the temple to cleanse it. That was a sign of the destruction that would come upon Jerusalem and the temple, which was fulfilled in 70 AD. So this is a played out parable. A parable in which the fig tree represents Israel, Jerusalem, and the temple, and its spiritual barrenness, leaving the Lord no choice but to judge it and destroy it because they bore no fruit and had no signs of ever bearing spiritual fruit. And so the Lord had to destroy it <clears throat> in His righteous judgment. Amen. So no, there is no problem. There is no contradiction. There is no error. And far from disproving the deed of Christ, it proves the deed of Christ because in these passages, it is God who's going to curse Israel because it is a cursed fig tree. What God in the Old Testament does is exactly what Jesus does when He enters the temple to purify it, showing that He is the God of Israel coming to judge this fig tree for not bearing fruit for His glory. Yeah, well done, well done. I mean, uh, this is the problem with our Muslim friends is like, if you if you try to um, uh, share with them something from the Quran, they, the easy answer for them is like, oh, you don't know Arabic. You don't understand the Quran. But amazingly, they're all experts in the Bible. 